This section will examine the different ways in which you can go about launching clips and then explore how to enhance your set by using follow actions to create variation every time you play. For this tutorial, I'll be using the live set launching clips and follow actions, which is part of the Ableton DJ course download. The launch controls are opened up by clicking on the L button in Clip View. There are four launch modes available, and you won't always want to use the same mode for all clips. The trigger launch mode makes the clip launch when selected, and will keep playing until it's stopped. This is the mode that you'll generally use for most clips. If gate has been selected, then the clip will only play for as long as the play button is depressed, and will stop the instant it's released. This works most effectively with no quantization, and is good for dropping in snippets of a sample. When toggle is selected, the play button will start the clip and will stop the clip if pressed again. In repeat mode, the clip will continuously re-trigger whilst the play button is depressed. Again, this setting depends on what the quantization is set to. If it is set to a quarter, then the first beat of the record will continuously repeat until the play button is released, and then the clip will continue playing like normal. The legato button below the launch modes allows you to toggle amongst a number of looping clips, changing instantly, but without ever losing sync. To demonstrate this, I've got two drum loops. I've turned the quantization off for both and turned legato on. I can now start a clip in time and then chop and change between the two of these without having to wait for the global quantize setting and stay perfectly in sync the whole way. When using this function, it can improve the sound quality by engaging the RAM button so that the clip is preloaded into memory. The quantization setting is normally set to global, meaning that the clip is affected by the global quantize setting at the top. For most situations, this will be one bar, meaning that each time a clip is triggered, it will begin at the start of the next bar. However, you can customize the quantization setting just for the individual clip. Follow actions are a great way of adding variation and change to a performance, so that it need never be the same twice and it drastically enhances the impact of your performance. They allow us to take a group of clips, and for each clip, assign probabilities for which other clip will play next. Follow actions can only be used within session view. Now we'll look at each of the settings for follow actions, and then we'll see them in use. Follow action time, here, controls how long the clip will play for before the follow action takes place. It's specified in bars, beats, and sixteenths of a bar. This box contains the options for all the different follow actions which you can use. Most of the actions are fairly self-explanatory. You can do nothing, play the same clip again, play the next one, play any clip in the group, or other, which means to play any clip except the one that just played. If you wish to have an alternative follow action, then this should be put in the second box, here. Underneath each of the follow actions is a box where you put the probability that the action will occur. If this is set to a probability of 1 to 0, then the action in the first box will always happen. If you set it to 1 to 1, then there's a 50% chance of either action occurring. If it is set to 4 to 1, then the first action is 4 times as likely to occur as the second action. To demonstrate follow actions taking place, I'm going to use five variations of a percussion loop, which I've put next to each other in a group. If I select all the loops together, then I can change the settings for all of them in one go. First of all, I'll set them to all play for one bar only, so that we can hear the changes quickly take place. Then I'll set the first box to next, with a probability of 1 to 0, so that the follow action will definitely occur. Let's hear this happen. OK, 
okay, let's try that again, but this time using the any setting. Now the clips will trigger any other clip in the group at random. Let's hear that. This time, we'll do the same again using the alternative follow action setting as well, and we'll record the results into arrangement view. I'll set the first follow action to other, and the second to play again. Now, to make it more interesting, I'll set the probability at 3 to 1, meaning that on average, 3 out of 4 times the clip will change to a different clip, but 1 out of 4 times it will play again. I'll press the record button, and then let's hear this. I can review everything that happened by looking at what was recorded into Arrangement View. Now that you start to get the idea, you should spend some time and experiment with follow actions to see what you can come up with. You can set the rules and decide what the odds are, and then leave the rest to chance. You can record whatever you come up with in Arrangement View as you go, and you never know what new and creative arrangements you may discover. This is the end of the section on launching clips and follow actions.